Hi, welcome back to Crochet Creations in episode number 48. I guess I skipped a week. I was planning on some stuff and, well, you know, things got busy and orders were work. I was working on orders and things like that. So now this is going to be a big whips video. <laughs> Things I'm working on, updates. Grab a cup and join me. So uh, this is a, a regular episode and I usually share my um, knitting and crochet with everyone. And so that's what I'm going to do today. First thing I usually do is tell you what kind of coffee I'm drinking. And I have... Uh, Oh, this wonderful brew of uh, Folgers. <laughs> and it has a little bit of hazelnut in it. So it's one of those normal days. It's exciting. Coming up is Vlogmas again. And I always try to come up with some crazy coffees. And I have a whole bunch ready. So it's going to be it's gonna be your normal. Um, I start out with talking about my Facebook group. Now, uh, weekly D stashes are normal over there. <laughs> if you'd like to join in, just ask me to join. My links are in the bottom in the description box. Click on that. I'll accept you as a new member, and then you can see all the D stashes every week. So, last week we had a Karen cotton cake up for. Uh, the D-stash for the week. We also had a uh, little green daisy stitch marker. So that was last week. It was won by Stephanie, who happens to be a friend. I met her from doing this yarny thing. <laughs> so she's already claimed it. So uh, this is the shelf that's going to be changing every week um maybe you know things won't change that much on it but i'm going to try to use this shelf as a catch-all so i don't have to go searching around to get ready to pack things and stuff like that so that one's going to go in the bag and shipped out tomorrow the new the new d stash for the week you can tell i'm not prepared well i am prepared but it's the new room, and I didn't have to, like, move anything. I just could come in and sit down and put my coffee down and set up the camera and go, Hey! <laughs> Hi! <laughs> so it's, it's, it's quite interesting. Um, this week's D-Stash. Anybody ever use this? Looks like junk to me, but that's just a word I say for yarns that need a lot of thought <laughs> then after a while you're like okay so this is ribbon yarn of some type or whatever and it has that where you have to open it up and find the end somehow or t'other and then it ends up being a lace pattern of some sort which is about an inch and a half wide when you get done. Okay. So this is Patan's Pirouette. It's a very, very tiny um, lacy pattern. And you're supposed to crochet using the very edge of it. So then it, it leaves a... Anyway. <laughs> I have three skeins of these and this time I added my first Christmas stitch marker to this one so we're getting into the into the next month already because I figure once this is going to be a week from now by the time you get it in the mail and ship it it'll be December so I figured it's time to start so for the next several weeks, most of my items will be having a Christmas stitch marker. If you'd like to try to 
win this, all you have to do is pop on over to the announcements tab of my Facebook group. Scroll down and you will see all the shenanigans going on over there. One of the posts is this D, uh, Christie's Closet D stash. That's where this is. If it's in the announcements, it'll have a date. It's for this week. I usually turn commenting off after the week has passed, so that way it's not as confusing. But still, people do have a little trouble navigating. I had extremely terrible trouble navigating this morning. <laughs> Apparently... The new white on white and no borders, no blue borders, no nothing is their new way of launching their new, their new update. Well, I, I'm having a hard time with no borders and no, no color at all. Everything is so bright to me. It's hurting my eyes to try to find my way around Facebook. So I did end up changing it to black and it is helping. And they didn't hide all the shortcuts, but they did move them around. So bear with me. There is one other thing I don't like when I copy and paste something, none of my cutesy little icons and stuff is coming up. That irritates me. I really like to put punctuation and different kind of things to separate what I'm talking about. They will not copy and paste over. So the only way I can add those icons is to go onto my phone and edit and put them back in. Well, that, that doesn't, that, that's like three times more work. So yes, I'm on a rant. <laughs> Hope you're bearing with me because I have lots of whips to show you. That's not what you're here for. We'll get on with it. So I just want to tell you why things are taking longer. Okay, so yesterday we had another episode of, of Hook and Stitch Live. That's a, a show I do with Kim Thompson from The Crafty Nomad. We are live on her channel, and then I usually pop a playlist of replays down here so you can find it easy and yesterday we had our episode number 12 I believe it was 12 so how exciting is that we had a great show usually we share you know exciting things that we found and things we're making and you know, we, we like to see what you're making too. So we have a community um, group that have been joining us lately and usually come on and show us their whips or their makes or a prop. usually there is a make-along going on that they also are engaging in and they are showing. Our make-along is coming to an end. It ended yesterday. However, I have a secret. Kim and I are going to be drawing the grand prize winners on Tuesday. So if you have a couple extra days to get your progress photos up, or actually it has to be a finish. So now we're looking for the finishes. I have about 25 or 26 finishes that I've been tallying. We will be drawing for those grand prize winners on Tuesday night together in a live video. It won't be live for you. It'll be, you know real time for for you like when the upload of it comes out it'll be on uh the crafty nomad channel and we have like four or five grand prizes to give away so that's been fun it's been going on it's a stitch in time a vintage mail make along which meaning that you could enter anything that had um a stitches in it handmade stitches and um we will be doing that one again. We really enjoyed this one. Neither one of us finished our makes. However, we weren't pressured to because we weren't the ones entering it. I did decide to do an old fashioned, pro um, not old fashioned, but an older pro. I guess, I guess this pattern's been around a while. They've changed it up a little. Some of them call it a Navajo pattern. I still call it the Navajo diamond pattern. I'll link it below. But this time 
I've done it a zillion times. I've decided to do it in my scraps. So every time I use up a skein and I have a little bit left, if it's a four or five, I'm throwing it in here. If it's a heavy three, uh, I'm throwing it in here. So what's nice about this is this is a pattern that's done on the front side of your work. So you can start a piece of, of yarn at this end with a tail work across and then end that piece of yarn so as long as it's long enough to go through your whole blanket it's long enough to use so even you know the smallest scraps are are available to use so i'm not very far but i'm figuring by the next time that we do this make along i can again share this with you now, another little tip I was going to tell you about for this blanket is that a lot of people like to do um, the temperature blankets. And everyone says, give me ideas, give me ideas. Well, I'm going to give you one now. I know it's November, but planning into January, if you graphed out your colors that you wanted to use for your temperature blanket and you use this pattern, which again one row per day 365 rows you would have a gorgeous blanket done in not only the colors of the temperature but it'll make a pattern on it afterwards so there is your tip for the week <laughs> for next year <laughs> okay so um yes we have uh, planned on that Tuesday, so look for that video to come out next week. <sighs> Mystery Kale Progressive with Stephanie from Stephanie's Yarn Escape. It's called the Grandma's Forever Hug. We are on week four. How time flies. I can remember just coming up with it with her and saying, we got to do this, we got to do that. We were all excited. And uh, now we're almost to the point where you guys are guessing what it is. <laughs> so we decided we were going to go ahead and show our progress with you today. Yes, I've showed it before, but now we've got a few more little touches to go. So I'm using... No, that isn't it. I'm using... Uh beautiful tweed it's a stitch studio by nicole earth tone i got it from ac moore um last year the color of mine is purple heart it's a four medium weight and it's a tweed so it has the all different colors here is my the big piece And it's quite long. It's about 55 to 56 inches long. It's about 20 inches wide. I have finished all of the border. Just a beautiful um, textured pattern. It's absolutely beautiful so then this week you were given out the next instructions and that was to make two pieces that has have the same um, textured pattern on them mine come out to be approximately 10 inches by 9 inches I have done the border on mine exactly the same way as piece number one. And I've done both of them. And so that finishes off my clues for the week. And then I get to add week number four's progressive prize to the grand prize now how this is going to work is i believe we agreed that on thanksgiving we were going to pick a random progress 
winner from each group. So we both will have a random progress winner next week to show you on, on Sunday. And then both of us are working toward a progressive box for our grand prize winner. So in order to win that box, you would have to finish your mystery cow and post your picture of it. So what we've decided to do is each week we would add a prize into that box. So what I've done is I've put them up here and today, because I didn't podcast last week, I decided to show week one through four. So this was week one and I added a stitch marker. This is a Lion Brand Homespun USA and it is done, it is in the colorway Salem Creek. This is a beautiful, soft, gorgeous yarn. It is only 64 yards because it's a bulky six, but it's gorgeous. Just love it. So that was week number one. Week number two, and I don't even know if I have these in order. I think I do. I think week number two was a skein of this gorgeous yarn bee, Katerina. And the colorway on this one is bright violet. And this yarn is light three. Beautiful. It also has a, a stitch marker. And there you go. So this one has 10% um, nylon and acrylic. So those two. Week number three. I might have had this one and this one switched, but that's okay. You still get them no matter what week they were in. You got a skein of Premier Medley in the colorway Current. And Premier Medley is an anti-pilling everyday yarn. And this was the stitch marker for week three or two, however I did them. Beautiful, 100% acrylic, beautiful yarn. The fourth one is this week's add to the progressive prize and that is a skein of super red heart super saver and this is beautiful too now i believe this is 100 percent acrylic it is one of these stripes latte stripes and the new stitch marker this week added is a Christmas stocking one. <laughs> so those are what's been put in to the progressive <coughs> box so far. This is the winning, the winning for the mystery cow. You have plenty of time to enter. This is only week number four of nine. We have a progress drawing coming on on next week and we have grand prizes uh, will be uh drawn on january 3rd so you have plenty of time to join in on that so i'm so excited about that i was watching uh stephanie earlier today and oh my gosh hers is gorgeous talk about completely different um looks as far as what yarn you use yes all of the makes are being posted by a lot of our friends. I think every single one of our friends are doing it, which is exciting because Knit Night starts and everybody gets out their their mystery cow and not one of them have let on what they think it is. So that's fun too. Okay, so let's see. Let's get on to hats, hats, and more hats. Well, all year long, I was trying to come up with... Um, I was trying to beat my challenge of 52 hats. I did that. 
So November, I changed it up and I decided to spotlight a yarn. So I am spotlighting the Premier Coffee Shop yarn this month. And this is the colorway Sadam Sadamo. And this yarn does have um, wool in it. It has 15% wool in it. It's a beautiful yarn. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that I did finish the crocheted version. Um, you've seen it a couple of times now. And I just wanted to say that throughout this version, I really didn't have any real issues with the yarn. Um, it was easy to use. It didn't split a lot. It was very nice. It does feel like 15% wool is in it, but it is not scratchy. It is a very nice yarn. So, so far, I liked it a lot. Okay, so then I went ahead and I was working on the knit version. And these little T. Dotto's bags, um, work perfect for making hats by the way i always use a t dotto's hat well i try to use a t dotto's hat when i do a hat so here is my knit version it's coming along i'm probably got four and a half inches already into it now today as you can see uh one of the dark shades has been introduced recently right about here there was a big puff in the yarn at that point it also stretched so that the puff was thick and then right after that was very very thin i left it in i figured it wasn't going to hurt anything it was just a puff it's knitting it's fine but I just wanted you to be aware that that did occur. It, it was not smooth like the other cake. So I was quite, I was quite shocked that that happened. And um, it happened twice. This one wasn't as big, but it's on the back side and it's not going to hurt anything. Rather than try and cut that out or pull that out, which would break the yarn, and then I'd have to have a knot there anyway. I did leave it. There didn't seem to be any problem leaving it. Some people would be quite dissatisfied with continuous problems like that. Now, see, it did cause quite a big splotch of black there. But this is a, ch a color changing yarn. So you are supposed to see color, ch color changes. So that's how it's coming out so far. And it is very, very nice. To me, using this pattern and this yarn in a crochet, this is a more of a female hat to me. So I went ahead and put a pom-pom on it. But as I go along, this is becoming more and more of a, like a masculine hat to me. However, someone who really likes these colors, these natural colors, it isn't going to matter. See, now there's one more. There's another puff. I did talk about this before, I think, because somebody said, can I pull it out? The nature of the yarn, it, that, you got to cut it out. I, I, I know what you mean about pulling puffs out, but with the wool the way it is, I, it's it's not it's not necessary to take out for one it's not hurting anything but so that is my hats hats and more hats for the month and so i've linked both of those patterns in my uh page for that now when you go down the post and you're looking at the monthly hats this is a challenge if you make a hat for a month for this month, you will win the third cake of the coffee shop in Sodomo. That that will be the prize for the month. And just a reminder, if you have posted every single month, you will be entered into the grand prize, which is a set of clover amour hooks. Next year. And I'm going to tell you now because a lot of people didn't know it last year. If you 
enter a hat in my hats, hats, and more hats every single month in 2021, you also will be entered into the grand prize bonus at the end of the year. So it's only one hat a month. I know you can do it. <laughs> so that is that interesting spotlight. <clears throat> okay, we'll move on to another whip. <laughs> What's been in my El Grey bag? This is my El Grey tote bag, which I adore. I love it. Love it. It has light lavender inside. And it's big enough to take care of this blanket, no problem. Okay, so I had a commission. I had someone ask me to make the cow blanket from Ravelry. And so I downloaded that onto my knit. It's a knit companion. Yes, knit companion program. It's on my, it's actually not on my iPad. It's actually on my, um, my Kindle. I have an, a Kindle. That is where it is. So I have worked on this. Not in the last couple of days, but I have worked on it. And I'm using a J hook, so it is not as big as it could be. Because I'm also using, and you've seen it a couple times because I've showed it, um, Stitch Studio Classic. Look how much of the yarn I've used. This was a humongous cake or skein, and <coughs> excuse me and it is being used quickly glad I have more <laughs> no I won't use it all I don't think I will because oh and the gray is um elephant it is uh pound of love in the elephant colorway so at the moment I can show it easily enough today because I don't have any gray attached. And so I have proceeded to get through 85 rows, I believe I'm on. 85 or 86. I can't believe I can fit that in the screen. Holy cow. All right. So this is a graph gam. And what you do is you finish the body first, which is what I'm doing. And then you make four legs, a tail, and a cow head and sew them on to the blanket. <laughs> so I got to get this done. The lady wants it by December. So I have, I'm going to work on it tonight again. See how far I can get on the body. And then I might, might tackle a couple of or maybe the first the first body part. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so let's see. What else do I got? Oh, I have a sweater I'm knitting. And I haven't shown that in a couple days. So it's in my in my bowl, in my yarn bowl. I got this at a local craft fair a couple years ago the lady was making them they are gorgeous it is ceramic the whole entire bowl was made by her i love it i had to have it i probably spent no i didn't spend all of my commissions from that craft fit sale that day but I, but it was like 35 dollars. but it was worth it to me because it's it's i like to get things from people that also make things that I don't make. All right, so what am I using? I'm using Premier Spun Colors. And this is a gorgeous yarn inside and out. It is many, many colors. I'm making this for myself. I'm no, in no way hurrying this because I've never made a sweater in it before except for baby sweaters and this is the rustic colorway 
to me i can wear this all year long even in the air conditioning at work so that's my plan this has some wool in it so there will be halo i am using okay i'm in the middle of a row which of course i am of course i am <laughs> okay so this is the collar i'm doing a vanilla sweater from the top down in the raglan look look how the colors are blending all by themselves so beautiful so i am on row i think i'm on row 28 maybe it, I think it's in the 20s, so I have not break, broke for the sleeves yet. I am starting my f next row of, um, the, of the button row because every 18 rows I am putting a buttonhole. So I am ready to do the third buttonhole. And then um, I'm probably well somebody told me you could take it off the needles and try it on good idea i guess so that is my vanilla sweater i will also link all these patterns below all right so um if you were watching the hook and stitch live show you will have noticed that i had started a new cocoon If you don't watch the Hook and Live show, that's fine. <laughs> Oops. I threw the, um, I apparently did not, <laughs> did not put my stitch marker back on. I had left it with the, um, with the hook stuck in it. And it was sitting in where? The yarn room, of course, where I sit. And I do knit night and things like that now. So <laughs> I'm using the L hook. This pattern is... a. It's created by me. And it is because I have done the cocoon many times. And I've decided to do my own sizing and my own stitches. So you may find several patterns out there to use to make a cocoon this one happens to be coming out of my head from being that i've done them many times so i will write it up eventually i am planning on sharing with you just like i share yarn with you and and all the other crazy things that i share <laughs> um so I'm doing this in, like I said, an L hook and La Karen Latte Cakes. This one, Karen Latte Cakes, has lots of halo. This one happens to be a solid, and it is the grinding teal colorway. This is beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous yarn. Um. Uh, my tip for you is to not use this yarn in a lot of open work. Um, a lot of double crochets, um, a lot of uh, chain spaces, a lot of lace. Because it has um, quite a lot of nylon in it. Which, be because of that it is probably very very soft because of that however it is uh considered a five bulky and um it has 42 percent nylon in it so it's ten it's tending to stretch quite a bit now if you look behind me claire is wearing a cocoon that i made last year and i did it from a pattern that someone had out and it was done in a granny square you continued to make the granny square 
until you got to your desired length and then you sewed up the corners for the sleeves then you did the border and because that is done in a lot of double crochets it is very stretchy and it is tending to be very holy now it's been washed once hasn't been worn but it's been on Claire a couple times and I've taken it to shows and it's done in a stripe uh, cof coffee latte I think color one of the one of the cream colorways that they had the first year that they came out with latte cakes so it's a very nice sweater I just am learning as I go to not use the kind of stitches with latte cakes so what I chose to do this time is it chose to do it in a half double crochet now this material that it is making is making me very happy it is very drapey it is very soft and yet it is not going to stretch all out of whack by itself it's going to need a little help to stretch which doesn't mean it won't because knitting always does but it is the perfect material for this type of thing so this will be a 45 inch one so this is going to be extra extra large maybe even 3x by the time it gets done it should be a good 50 inches uh, this is a commission and so I am trying to get it done for Christmas. I've already used one whole cake up and it's coming out beautiful. So that is something. If you're interested in a possible um, pattern release of my, uh, my version of this cocoon, let me know because I, I think... I wasn't planning on being a designer, no, but if I'm already doing it, I might as well share it with y'all. Okay, so that is that. What's next? <laughs> what is next? All right, so um, on the uh, live, I also talked about something that's up and coming, and that is um, I did a a pattern for a scarfy made out of scarfy <laughs> lion brand scarfy and here it is now i showed the beginning of this um infinity scarf on my um episode 45 or 46 somewhere in there and i said that i was working on a new scarf and i showed you know like maybe that much of it and I said, I, I possibly might write it up. Well, I have it written up. It is gone to the testers. And um, my plans are to release this December 1st. But then I thought, you know what? Make a twist. Put a twist in it. So I did. I put a twist in it before I sewed it together. And the twist is that for December my Christmas gift to you all is this pattern and I'll be doing it, giving it to you in a challenge for December and you will be able to try and win something. Um, I will give you the pattern as it comes out and then you will make it and then you will be able to post to win stuff in December so it will be a mini make along in my Facebook group so that's exciting <laughs> I am just excited about that I never really thought that I would be writing patterns um, and even thinking about you know maybe even selling them but what that's still yet to come that one is going to be a free one. So, and I have put free ones out before. In fact, the Mystery Cal is a collaboration with Stephanie. We both helped write it and we both uh, put a twist on it to make each one of them just slightly different. So they, they're, it's fun. 
very, very fun. Um, let's go on. The next item I have to show is um, something from the show again. I had a couple of skeins of some bulky yarn and I decided to do the pavement infinity scarf from Jennifer at Fiber Flux and use this bulky yarn up and look at how pretty it ended up coming out in that v-stitch pattern. The only thing is I did not make an infinity out of it. I just made it straight up and used that bulky yarn up because I only had enough to do this scarf. There was, I don't even remember the yarn. I remember it being cushiony and it's called Snowy lilac and it's a bulky six and it was a stitch studio and why i know that is because i always add a care tag in my business card on all items that i'm going to sell and on that i write down the yarn i used in case the person ever wants another one or something to match it i can say yes i do have yarn like that no i don't whatever It'll tell me what I used. It'll tell them how to take care of it. It'll tell them if it has wool in it and those kind of things. So this is, I'm full of tips today. <laughs> so this was all I had left of that. So then I wanted to use up some more of this bulky stuff. So this pattern is uh, the basic beanie pattern from Bag O' Day and this one is done in loops and threads, velvet, and it's a wool. And this one has 50% wool, and yet it is so soft. It's got a tonal to it, too. And I added a pom-pom to it, and it has a snap-on, so these can be removable. Both of these items are in my Etsy shop and can be purchased. You can purchase them separate or together. Um, I did not put them as a set in there because that way, if somebody just wanted one of them, but it, I thought that they came out rather well as a set. So that's something you can do with your bulkies that you don't know what to do with. Try and go through them and try to match your solid to your variegateds, and then maybe you can come out with a set. So that is it. Um, I think that's a wrap. I think I have talked about just about everything here. <laughs> I do know my phone turned off and I will have to link these videos together, which is not a problem anymore. It doesn't bother me anymore now that it's happening to me. <laughs> um, I do want to talk about a few things that are up and coming. It's an exciting time of the year for everyone. Um, I have so many things planned for December. I don't even know if I can remember them all. <laughs> Number one, I'm going to do Vlogmas. And I'm hoping that everyone will come and watch and subscribe. Please subscribe because I am looking to hit some some milestone numbers and one of them is a thousand I would very much like to hit a thousand subs and when I do of course I'll have a giveaway of course who wouldn't you know so um maybe this year it'll be even bigger than my 500 um the other thing that I am hoping to, is that you will all come and watch Vlogmas. Vlogmas this year is going to have, uh, all, whatever go, whatever's going on in December, I will vlog about, but it will be fiber. So if I get something in the mail, if I, you know, am making something, I will put it in Vlogmas, but I'm hoping that you will enjoy the Vlogmas as much as I enjoy making it for you. Um, let's see, what else? I plan on having a, a make-along in my December make-along. We still will have all month long with Stephanie with the a whole nother half 
of our mystery cal will be going on, which is great. So I'll have that updates of that. Um, I'm going to be uh, swapping advent calendar or you know advent calendars with Kim the crafty nomad and she and I are will be opening our advents that we made each other on our vlogmas so we have that to look forward to and we also are having a hook and live stitch now see now I don't know why I set that backwards but it's not going to be edited so bear with me <laughs> we are going to have a hook and stitch live Christmas party and you are all invited. Will there be prizes? Well, of course there will, but <laughs> you have to wear an ugly sweater, a sweater. Yes, it's sweater weather and you need to wear an ugly sweater to our Christmas party. That will be December 19th at 12 Eastern Standard Time, 9 a.m. Pacific, on the Crafty Nomad channel. It's going to be a hoot, I'm sure. We will probably have a lot of other things to talk about. We will have a month to come up with stuff. We always, <laughs> we always come up with something, you know. But that'll be something to look forward to. And, um, yeah, so I, I you know... I'm I'm getting excited for December now. And in fact, I think possibly I need to add a Christmas tree behind me. <laughs> and I probably will. I will probably put one up by the time the Vlogmas starts. Thanks for subbing to my channel. Thanks for watching. Thanks for always being there, supporting me in all of my crazy adventures with everybody. And um, thanks for liking this video and sharing with your friends. And I hope you all have a happy Thanksgiving. Bye now.